Welcome to Friday Beyond Spotlights. My name is Nick Chen, a lawyer and lawmaker. I'm your host for this episode. Today's guest is the Secretary for Security of the Hong Kong Special Ministry Region, the Honorable Mr. Chris Tang, GBS, PDSM, uh, JP, uh, Secretary Tang, welcome onto our show. Hi, Nick. Thank it's you, fun. Chris. Uh, thanks for having me here. <laughs> Just call me Chris. You don't have to quote you know, my long title. <laughs> Thank you. You're very kind. Chris, um, is Hong Kong a fair, transparent, stable and safe place for local and international businesses to feel welcome, thrive and to prosper? Um, I think the answer is definitely yes. So first of all, uh, uh, you can look at some uh, objective figures, right? So the crime rate in Hong Kong, I think, is one of the lowest among the major cities in the world. I think it's as low as Singapore. And uh, when you look at the crime rate, uh, Paris is about two times of Hong Kong, mm. Toronto is about five times, and uh, L uh, London is about ten times. Mm. Right? And uh, I think everyone will feel safe to walk at the street in Hong Kong in uh, uh, every time of the day. Compared with some of the cities like uh, New York, uh, I don't think you will feel safe to walk around here. Uh, Chris, what is the relationship between uh, national security and economic prosperity? I think security and stability is the basis for economic development. I think no one will invest in a war zone, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look back at uh, 2019, uh, you know, where petrol bombs are flying all around mm. and the shops are being you know, vandalized and even set fire. Mm. I don't think no people uh, will enjoy do, doing business in this kind of environment. What well, do locals, expatriates alike, business leaders, international business chambers, representatives and the diplomatic corps, do they support the local government, the Hong Kong government and the Legislative Council uh, in proposing and passing the Safeguarding National Security Bill into law? In my interaction with them, I would say that most of them do support the Article 23. Mm. Even some of the like uh, foreign consul general, uh, because of you know p political reasons. Yes. E even you know they, they have some concerns, but they still have to recognize that we have a constitutional res a responsibility to enact the Article 23. Has there been a public response, and has is it overwhelming one way or the other? In the consultation uh, result, you know we have about over 13,000 uh, uh, response, right? Mm. And uh, 98.6% do support the enactment of Article 23. In talking to business chambers, do they ask any particular questions um, that you know they would like to have more answers and more comfort before they, you know, fully put their weight behind it? Initially, they have some concerns mm. about like uh, uh, state secrets. What is the definition of state secrets? Mm. And like uh, external interference. You know, they worry about will I do business with overseas. Uh, entity that will be any problem mm. and you know after my explanation about like state, state secret it's not just the interaction you know it's uh, you do not have the legal authority mm. and the things that you talk about will likely endanger national security right. I'm sure everyone doing business here they come here just to do business they're mm. not come here to endanger national security what do they have to worry about um, how do you draw the right balance between um, economic prosperity and national security, particularly in, in the areas of protection of uh, human rights guaranteed by the basic law of Hong Kong? Oh, so basically, security and stability is not against econom economic development. Mm. They go alongside, you know, they're having the same goal. Yes. But of course, um, you're talking about human rights mm. uh, in the like uh, basic law, also even in the national security law, and in Article 23, we all have across that to en ensure that human rights are being protected in accordance with the uh, two major international continents. Are the you know, freedom of assembly, freedom of press, freedom of publication, are, are these all being protected? So of course, you know, mm. under uh, basic law and also national security law and also our local, you know, Article 23, so the right of like speech, mm. gathering, uh, press freedom, they're all guaranteed. Mm. And what about access to lawyers? Is that protected? Of course, of course, it's spelled clearly in the law that, you know, our common law system will, uh, will be the same. Presumption of before. innocence? So of course, of course, you know, you have access uh, to lawyer, you know, uh, everything has, has to be dealt in accordance with law. Mm. And, you know, uh, before you're being convicted, you're still presumed to be innocent. That's all common law principle will be there. Um, I, I saw some of the Western or Western government funded media uh, talked about the definition of state secrets um, or national security. They 
some of them tend to suggest, oh, it, you didn't fully define it. Um, could you exhaustively define it? Is that the normal way to doing things in common law jurisdictions? I think first of all, mm. the national um, security is clearly defined in the law. Mm. It's spelled out in full. Right. Right. I think it's one of the clearest definition um, in the world, I mm. would say. Mm. And also for state secret, actually, we also spell out very clearly there's uh, three elements. Mm. You know, you have to be you know, disclose without legal authority, mm. and then you have to be a very likely and danger national security, yes. and then you have to fall within seven particular type of area. Ah. So even the things that you're talking about fall within state secrets, mm. and in order to commit an offence, you still have the intention to endanger national security. So I'll say there's so many safeguards. If you are not really intend to endanger national security, mm. then you won't commit offence, of course. But how do you prove so of course, of course, It is up to the mm. prosecution to prove beyond reasonable doubt before mm. we can uh, like, uh, proceed with the prosecution and convict it in court. It's our uh, responsibility to prove it in court. Are there any defences to uh, unlawful disclosure of uh, you know, uh, state secrets. Secret, all right. <laughs> so, uh, as you can see, you know, initially in our consultation paper, mm. we do not have a, such a provision of exemption. Y uh, said during the consultation yeah. mm. period, you know, mm. because we realize that some country do have some like uh, uh, exemption uh, when it comes to the uh, public interest of not disclosing is bigger than disclosing, right? Mm -hmm. So, in fact, uh, during the consultation period. We have, uh, you know, listened to the opinion and also during the appeals committee stage, we also, you know, receive uh, comments from the uh, members. Mm. So uh, eventually we do have such a provision. But I would say national security is a very important aspect of our daily life and in order to protect our country. So even if there's an exemption, it will be, uh, the threshold will be very high. Mm. So things like gossip or curiosity doesn't make it as a a public interest. So they will continue to be free flow of information, of free course. flow of capital. Of course. On June 30th, 2020, uh, the national legislature passed into law the um, you know, uh, national security law, which is mm -hmm. implemented in Hong Kong on the same yeah. day, passed into law under Annex 3, implemented on the same day. Uh, can you share why we still legislate under Article 23 of the Basic Law? All right, so the uh, national security law, it only governs four offences. Mm. Right, so in fact, under Article 23, there are seven offences. Mm. And uh, two are covered by the NS law, right. but uh, five remains untouched. Mm. So there's a need. And mm. uh, when you look back at the, at the real scenario, like what happened in 2019, mm. obviously the four offences under NS law is, is not enough. Mm. And yet, I think the enactment of Article 23 is not just to supplement the five offences. Mm. And we also have to look at the whole legal system mm. and the uh, enforcement uh, mechanisms, mm. uh, see how we can uh, further improve so that to enhance our national security. This is all uh, under the uh, uh, national security law and also the uh, basic law and also under the uh, 5 to 8 decision. Um, can you highlight some of the key philosophical approach or provisions in the, in the law? First of all, uh, we have the um, uh, constitutional responsibility, mm. but it's not just because of the responsibility. Yes. We have to face of real scenario like what happened in 2019. Yes. You know, the failed attempt of the uh, Hong Kong version of color revolution. Mm. Mm. You have to prevent such things mm. being happen again, mm. right? Mm. So this is the uh, uh, first principle. Yep. And the second principle is not just to cover the five remaining offenses. Mm. Mm. Is we have to look at a at hold Mm. Uh, how to, uh, you know, out of the Article 23, yes. out of national security law, mm. and also the 5 to 8 decision, mm. how to further improve the legal system and our enforcement and mechanism as a whole, mm. so that our national security can be uh, better taken care of. Mm -hmm. And the third principle, it's a, uh, it is a, a, a moving law, mm. it's evolving mm. law, mm. so that uh, apart from uh, that we can handle the situation at the moment, yes. and we are able to uh, handle the future threats. Being the last concept. principle is yes. that we have to safeguard the uh, human rights and other uh, rights of people mm. uh, uh, in the process of enacting Article 23. In passing the bill uh, into law, do you think we are too fast and too harsh? Uh, I, I don't think so, mm. because you know, uh, unlike in uh, back to uh, 2003, mm. Because, you know, over the years, in particular after 2019, mm. people in Hong Kong do have a consensus that we need 
do have a better law to protect our nation's our national security. Mm. So there's a high consensus among the people of Hong Kong that we need to enact such law. Mm. And in fact, since the uh, announcement of the enactment of the law by the uh, chief executive mm. in his uh, policy address, mm. we receive a lot of opinion from different walks of life. Mm. And in our formulation of our, our first draft of the law, I, the consultation paper, mm. we have incorporated a lot of the opinion from the public. Mm. So I would say uh, the time is it, it, just good enough, not too long, not too short, it's appropriate. That's great. Chris, Hong Kong is such a safe yeah. and beautiful city. Uh, how does the Security Bureau keep Hong Kong safe? I think it's not just the Security Bureau. I think it's the consolidated effort of the whole government mm. and of uh, my law enforcement agencies mm. and also all the people of Hong Kong. Mm. Please, can you? Yes, yes, you can see here. Hey, hello, Mr. Tai. Hey, hello, how are you? Hello, nice to meet you. Hey, hello, how are you? Hey, uh, Mr. Tan, thank you for your great work doing for Hong Kong. Oh, it's, uh, thanks for the kind word, and it's my duty and honor. And how do you find living in Hong Kong? Oh, I love it. This is a safe place to raise my four boys and the dogs. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think it's also because uh, we have great people like you living in this city. Thank you, Mr. Tan. I know you are so busy at work. How do you allocate your time and uh, your family? Um, actually, it, it's quite difficult to, uh, you know, have uh, my work-life balance. Uh, I think I can only, you know, sacrifice my resting time and that's all. Thank you very much for your great work. Okay, enjoy. Enjoy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Enjoy. Bye-bye. Okay. Enjoy. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Welcome back to Friday Beyond Spotlights. We have with us today the Secretary for Security of the Hong Kong Special Music Region, the Honorable Chris Tang. In this show and tell segment, Chris will show us an item that has a special meaning or significance to him. Chris, could you show us this very special Hi, item? So actually, <laughs> this is a, a, a police bear. Mm. Uh, that, that, uh, it, it's my character, right? Wow. All right. Uh, this teddy bear, it represents me. In fact, it, it's a, a character played by me in a promotional video mm. that we took in 2020. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah, right, that one was yes. directed by uh, Mr. Dento Lam. Yes. And the story is talking about, you know, a group of terrorists that hold their hostages mm. with a will to release their leader. Mm. But, you know, of course, uh, you know, after the action of our elite units, yes. the bad guys are all being catched and we uphold the safety of Hong Kong. This is you in the movie? This is me. In, I, uh, in fact, I only appear in the episode for one second, and I play a role one of second? a police constable. <laughs> oh. But the message uh, I want to take out is, uh, uh, no matter, you know, even your role is small, but mm. your implication is big. So this is the message that I want to get across. That's fantastic. May I? Sure. So cute. And you can see the number. Uh, is this your number? 106 is my number. Wow. Wow. Terrific. Now, what is your philosophy as a leader, then as a commission of police, and now as a secretary for security? All right, so I think I have played a different role in, uh, you know, as a commissioner of police and mm. a secretary for security. Mm. When I was in the police force, it was a, at a time of crisis. Mm. You know, a leader need to be someone that you can rely on. Mm. And, mm. Uh, you know, I, I uh, will tell you to do one of the things that I can do it myself. Mm. Mm. And I will go to the forefront and show to the people that the danger that you're facing, I'll face it as well. Mm. So you, I think this is very important. You went to the front line, didn't you? Yeah, of you? course. I, I still remember, um, you know, after the election of the district council, mm. it's mm. really hostile. It's because all those district council are being, you mm. know, whole hostages, I would say, by mm. those oppositions, right? Yes, yes. But a police commander, they have to attend to those uh, district uh, uh, council meeting. Mm. Mm. And those opposition, they spelled out very clearly that we are going to humiliate you. Yes. In, the, in those meetings. Yes. So, as a commission of police, I attend the first few district council meetings. Mm. I show how we s spell out, you know, the truth mm. uh, in, in a humble but in a firm manner. Yes, yes. Right. yes. But as a, um, a secretary for security, mm. and I think apart from op operational issues, mm. I have to look at things like in a, a bigger picture, mm. in uh, like the coordination of resources, mm. how to uh, make a better law mm. and how to have a better resources mm. and how to get uh, support more from the community. When you were first promoted to be the uh, commission for police, um, the morale in the police force wasn't high because a small segment of the population yeah. were engaged in smearing campaign and uh, some were, you know, um, 
camping out or you're trying to attack family members of the police. How, how did you yeah, change um, uh, that? That's what you talk about is really true. Mm. Because when I took over as a command, the morale is quite low. Mm. The reason is, you know, we're trying our best to protect uh, the, the people of Hong Kong. Mm. But it seems like people are saying that we are suppressing their freedom. Mm. Uh, so, so our officers have to query about the meaning of our work. Mm. What is our meaning? Mm. So I, uh, what I did is I tried to, uh, uh, you know, let them to repick mm. their uh, meaning of work. Mm. All right. Mm. So I think the first thing is I have to change the motto. Yes. Because in the past, the motto is to uh, serve with pride and care. Mm. Our officers considered that, you know, our pride are being taken away. Mm. And uh, how come we still serve them? Right. right. So mm. I changed the motto as uh, we serve with duty, honor, and loyalty. Mm. So that is, we have to be loyal to our police force. Mm. We have to be loyal to the society and the country. Mm. And by serving the people, it is already our honor. It doesn't matter whether they support us or not. It mm. is our honor to serve them. Mm. So surprisingly, just you know, uh, change the motto. It seems that they pick up, you know, the uh, meaning of their work. So mm. Mm. Uh, things uh, start to change better. During the events in 2019, you were always at the front line to protect the citizen um, and you know, keep the morale high. But did you have to spend? you know, overnight at the police station? So actually, I spend most of, um, of my time day and night in my office in the command room. Mm. Because, you know, my officers are still fighting right out there, mm. uh, no matter, you know, how late they are. And I have to support them, I have to give them resources, and sometimes they have to rely on me on the decision of what to do. So I have to be there. In those days, uh, if you look at the internet, there are some secret groups that are, um, you know, plotting things against your personal safety, your family safety. Mm -hmm. How do you keep sane and strong, you know? So, in fact, uh, all the details of my family members are being doxxed. Mm. And, uh, you know, their, their workplace, their phone number, it's all over the place. And mm. they, they get a lot of nuisance call mm. and people, you know, write to their company saying that, please sack them. Mm. And uh, I would say they are under big pressure. Yeah. For me, myself, as a police officer, it, it, it's my, my duty to, to be under such a pleasure, right? It mm. comes with my duty. Mm. It's mm. not my family. Mm. I'm really thankful for them, you know. They not just stand the pressure, and they also are saying that they're very supportive to my work. And I, I would say at that time, mm. th those uh, opposition, they're really evil. Mm. You know, they're not just turning against us. Mm. They turn against our family members. Children. If you can still yeah. remember, mm. in our Wong Tai Xin police quarters, mm. you know, they smash all the windows mm. uh, uh, of our police quarters, mm. and our police students at school are being abused mm. just because their parents are police officers. You see, the world is that crazy at that time. Mm. So uh, I really also feel indebted to all my fellow officers mm. and also their family members. Did you start off wanting to be police officer since young? Uh, and yes. did you ever think you would become uh, then the commissioner and now the secretary? I mean, uh, joining the police, it's my uh, life dream. Mm. I would say from, from young kids because, uh, you know, I live uh, next to a police station. Oh. So I always like to be a police officer. It's never changed. Right. I'm lucky that I can do what I want. Mm. I never think of, you know, what rank I want to achieve. I would say the most interesting part of my work is at my junior stage. Because, you know, I can kicking up the door, <laughs> you know, arresting the bad guy, yes. uh, doing all these, uh, you know, uh, fun line duties, you know, yes. get yes. more fun. Yes. But when I grow up, I have to be, uh, to have more responsibility, mm. but less fun. But, I mean, it's my destiny. Chris, in 2019, not only um, as the members of the police force had their morale crushed, but also the people of Hong Kong, I think, lost direction. A lot of people moved away. Um, be it for the you know kids not being able to have a proper education, businesses not being able to open their doors. Um, how did you feel about that? Uh, I mean, uh, actually, it's really heartbreaking. The world has been changed from you know people respecting each other. Mm. You know, we're living in a peaceful environment. Mm. Everyone is able to speak out. You know what they think. Mm. Suddenly, if you are not on side with the mob, mm. and then you will be assault. Mm. even set fire. Mm. It's really heartbreaking. You know, mm. this is not the Hong Kong that, uh, that I used to be familiar with. Yeah. So, I mean, being a people of Hong Kong, yes. and also in particular as a police officer, I think I, I have the, uh, not just the responsibility, I have, mm. the, I have the vision that I, I have to, you know, make Hong Kong to get back 
to normality. So I think this is what make me, you know, I have to, to have the vision that I have to, first of all, I have to curb the violence, mm. and mm. I want to bring back peace mm. to the people, mm. and I want the people to know actually what's happening mm. and how they are being incited mm. by those people with a will to endanger our national security, mm. and they're not really doing good for Hong Kong. Mm. They're not simply fight for democracy. Mm. They're trying to bring a color revolution mm. in Hong Kong. Yep, so how do you reinvigorate that Lion Rock spirit, that can-do spirit, mm. um, to overcome challenges and obstacles? Since my, uh, my growing up, I've been always being told by my parents that, you know, we love Hong Kong, we respect each other, mm. and this is how Hong Kong grows. It's all because, you know, everyone take one more step. Mm. And mm. Uh, we we to be a, a, just not thinking about ourselves. You know, mm. think about mm. something bigger. This is a society, mm. and we have the family, and we have the country. Mm. But unfortunately, during 2019, people are just thinking about individual. Mm. I want to do something. Mm. You know, even uh, the things that I do mm. may violate the law, mm. but this is something that I want to do. This, this is okay. I think this is really heartbreaking to see this kind of uh, mm. negative feeling. It sounds very really naive, but I just want to protect Hong Kong. Yes. Now we come to one of our fun rapid fire segments where we get up close and personal to our guests today, uh, Mr. Chris Tang. Now I will fire some rapid questions at you. Please right. answer them as your answers come oh, to I mind. Try. Try. Um, uh, you ready? Yes. What is your favorite place to eat? A local tea restaurant. Favorite comfort food? Um, like egg tart and a local meal tea. Biggest guilty pleasure? Chicken wing with luncheon meat, uh, <laughs> instant noodle. Lovely. Last thing you search online? A uh, restaurant. Favourite place you travel? Uh, Shanghai. Favourite sport? Uh, jogging. Favourite place in Hong Kong? Sa First job? Please. Who do you admire? Uh, artist Andy Lau. <laughs> Hidden talent? Uh, I'm still searching. Talent you wish you had? <laughs> Singing. Your proudest moment? Uh, when my daughters get married. Nicest thing someone has said to you? Uh, some strangers said thank you during 2019. If you were to write a book, what would it be about? Uh, Please stories. Title of your autobiography? Um, safeguarding the city. Qualities you admire most about your parents? Uh, honesty, integrity and a kind heart. Biggest fear? Snake. <laughs> Biggest misconception about you? Uh, I'm tough, but in fact I'm tender. An advice to your younger self? Uh, you never know how great is your responsibility, so work hard. The legacy you wish to leave behind? Um, an enactment of Article 23. Describe Hong Kong in one word. Home. Thank you, Chris. Welcome. Well, that's all the time we have for today. See you next time on Friday Beyond Spotlight.